For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a month of love, but we know we have the love of God inside of us every day, every minute, every hour. Amen. We thank God that we are here on the Sunday afternoon to worship him, to lift him up, to encourage and to strengthen and to introduce those who do not know Christ to the love of Christ, which is found in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we're going to open in a word of prayer. Loving Father, we praise you. We magnify you. We adore you. We worship you. We honor you. There is none like you, none before you, none after you, and none on the same level with you. That's why we magnify your name. And Lord, we sing praises to your name. At this time, Father, as we come at this forum, we act so God that your Holy Spirit presence would be in the midst of everything that's said and done. We ask God that there is that are listening, that you would anoint them, that the hearts of God, you would prepare them to receive your word. And I pray, God, that most of all, that the decision would make today to follow you, to give their life over to you. Father, we thank you for this forum. We ask that you continue to bless us, continue to dwell in us, continue to work through us as we do your work. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to go into our worship session with Minister Denlin. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, we give you thanks, praise, and glory for this day and every day, oh Lord. We ask that you would just open up your hearts, sing along with me. I can hear you virtually. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. Oh, I love to praise his holy name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. Oh, I love to praise his holy name. For oh, he's my rock. He's my rock. My rock, my sword and shield. He's a will, he's a will. In the middle of the wheel, I know him never, never, never let me down. He's just the jewel that I have found. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, I love to praise his name. Oh, hallelujah, I love to praise his name. Oh, I love to praise his holy name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. Oh, I love to praise his holy name. He's my rock. He's my rock. My rock, my sword and shield. He's a will. He's a will. In the middle of the will, I know he'll never, he'll never. Never let me down. He's just a Jew. He's just a Jew that I have found. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I love to praise his name. Oh, hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Oh, I love to praise. I love to praise, I love to praise his holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless 
the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. And you say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands with me. 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 Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and dance before the Lord. 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 And you say hallelujah. Everybody say hallelujah. And you say hallelujah. Everybody say hallelujah. Come on and bless the Lord with me. 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 Everybody say hallelujah. And you say hallelujah. Everybody say hallelujah. Oh, we say hallelujah. Everybody say hallelujah. And you say hallelujah. And we say hallelujah. Everybody say hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Thank God for worship. Thank God for our sister, for allowing God to use her to lead us into worship. This time we're going into to the reading of the word, Sister Makeda or Aisha. The scripture reading is taken from John 15, verses 1 through 17. I am the true vine, I and my father is a gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will be more, even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my command commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. 
I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the father will give you. This is my command, love each other. This is the word of the Lord. If ye love me, keep my commandments. How great is the love of God towards his children that love him. We give God thanks for the word, reading of his word. We pray that there's something in there that would remind us, encourage us, compel us to keep on abiding in God. As he said, without him, you can do nothing. It doesn't matter what our status in this life is. If he don't wake us up to go throughout the day, we can't wake up by yourself. So without him, we can do nothing. So we give God thanks for his word and for his Holy Spirit. We continue with our worship. Amen, amen. This is another oldie but goodie. So you all just um, pray with me, worship with us. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I got my war clothes on in the army of the Lord. I got my war clothes on in the army. I've got my war clothes on in the army of the Lord. I've got my war clothes on in the army. I've got my breastplate on in the army of the Lord. I got my breastplate on in the army. I've got my breastplate on in the army of the Lord. I got my breastplate on in the army. I got my war clothes on in the army of the Lord. I got my war clothes on in the army. I've got my war clothes on in the army of the Lord. Got my war clothes on in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. Yes, in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. This one is for Sister Bernalyn. See what the Lord has done for us. See what a mighty God he is. See what the Lord has done for us. See what a mighty God he is. Walls come tumbling. Walls come tumbling. Walls come tumbling down. Oh, bless his holy name. Walls come tumbling. Walls come tumbling. Walls come tumbling down. So bless his holy name. Oh, see what the Lord has done for us. See what a mighty God he is. See what the Lord has done for us. See what a mighty God he is. Walls come tumbling. Walls come tumbling. Walls come tumbling down. Oh, praise his holy name. Walls come tumbling. Walls come tumbling. Walls come tumbling now. So praise his holy name. Walls come tumbling, walls come tumbling, walls come tumbling down, so praise his holy name. Walls come tumbling, walls come tumbling, walls come tumbling down, so praise his holy name. Oh, bless his holy name. Oh, praise his holy name. Oh, bless his holy name. Oh, praise his holy name. 
Amen. Amen. God bless you, my sister. Thank you. Amen. What the Lord has done, walls come tumbling down. If you just put your trust and your faith and your confidence in him, he can do mighty things, unexpected things, even though we know he can do all things well. Thank you, my sister, and God bless you and keep you and continue to anoint your voice as you minister for his glory and for his honor. Amen. Seems like time is going slow. Time is coming fast. I can't believe that we are at the point of the world already. Seems like we just started. I think my sister sing too shortly. That's what it is. <laughs> anyway, we're going to move along. We thank God for all of you who have tuned in live and for all of you who will be tuning in later by Facebook or by YouTube. We thank God that we have this forum to spread the gospel throughout the earth. He says, if only just one sinner come to repentance, we have done our work. Amen. So we give God thanks and praise. We thank God for bringing us to this point where we're going to hear from our speaker, doctor, teacher, mother, sister, friend, educator. But before she come forth, we're going to go into a word of prayer that the Holy Spirit would start charge the atmosphere with his presence and with his anointing. Loving Father, we thank you again. We are so grateful that you're not tired of hearing us. We know, God, in human nature, God, that when we call somebody once and they answer, they don't want us to hear them call their name again. But we're so grateful that we have a heavenly Father who said that we must call on you at any time in any circumstances. And Lord, at this time, we call on your name. We call on your power of the Holy Spirit, God. That Lord, you will discharge the atmosphere with the Holy Spirit presence, Father. The Lord, oh God, that the word come forth, God. That Lord, you will reach the hearts that need to hear it. You will reach the ears that need to hear it. As your word said, let those who have ears, let them hear, Father. Lord, we pray, oh God, that, that hearing, oh God, will cause them, oh God, to come to a point of conviction and conversion, Father, in the name of Jesus. The Lord, as your your minister, oh God, stand before this auditorium today to present your word. We ask for your anointing presence. We ask for your Holy Spirit present. We ask, oh God, that the words that you have given her, oh God, that they will come forth with clarity and with truth and with the anointing. So we ask, oh God, that you continue to bless us, continue to tune our hearts and ears towards you in Jesus' name and pray. Amen. At this time, I present to you Dr. Novella Springett. Praise God, praise God. Today I'm going to be speaking on, I am a friend of God. And Makeda read this, most of the scripture earlier. And I'll be coming from the book of John, chapter 15, verses 9 to 17. Thankful to be in his presence yet another Sunday. And... As always, I will give you some background and put the scripture into context. The book of John was written by John the Beloved, the one who spent his time resting on Jesus' bosom. He's, this is not the only book he wrote. He wrote 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and he's also credited with Revelation. Revelation is probably the toughest book of the New Testament in terms of interpretation, in terms of everything. And he says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. He has many names throughout church history. They refer to him as John the Elder, John of Patmos, John the, Be the beloved disciple. And it is him who has given to the church the verse that is always taught to everyone. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed on him might be saved. And John is one of the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, but he differs from the others. Matthew, Mark, and Luke tell you what Jesus did. He's, he's, he gave them parables, he cast out demons, he healed the sick, John, and they start off with a genealogy. John doesn't do any such thing. He said, these are words are written that you might believe that Jesus was the Messiah. And he's called the gospel of the resurrection because he presumes, you know, that Jesus rose from the dead. And when 
they first started, they used to go to the synagogue. The book of Acts tell you that they went to the synagogue to worship, but they got kicked out because they insisted that Jesus was the Messiah. There's no other Messiah going to come. So John put together this book that starts off in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Of the apostles, John is the only one who died a natural death. From what we read in church history, um, Peter we know was crucified like Jesus and he asked to be crucified upside down but he did not think he was worthy to be crucified in the same position as his Lord. Um, and John, the scripture that we are reading and that we're looking at today falls into what is known as a farewell discourse. And it runs, the farewell is Jesus lecturing the disciples, talking to them on the, as he begins to get ready and readying them for the fact that he's about to be crucified. John 14 to 17 is called the farewell discourse. And it takes place after they've had the last supper, after Jesus has washed the disciples' feet, after he begins to speak to them, to empower them and prepare them for what was going to come. And as always, I'll read verse 9 to 11 of John 15, and he says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. Now, Jesus is not speaking to the multitude. He's speaking to the disciples. They have walked with him for three years. Many things he has said to them and they have not understood, but they have grown in grace. They have grown in knowledge. And he's saying, as the father has loved me, so have I love you. The love of God that he's expressing to these disciples because God, we know, is from everlasting to everlasting. And he's saying that as the Father has loved me from the beginning outside of time and beyond time, this is the way I'm loving you. This is not a love that you could do something and I'm going to get vexed with you and fall out of love with you. This is not a love that somebody could show up and give, you, give me a story and I'm going to stop loving you. This is a love that he says, as the father has loved me, the only begotten son of the father. As the father has loved me, so have I loved you. I haven't kept back anything and said, you're not worthy or you don't deserve the same kind of love that I get. I'm the privileged one, I'm the son here. So I should get a special love and not you. He says, as the father has loved me, so have I love you. This is, has no end. And he didn't use, oh, like how a mother loves her child. He's done that before. He's proven to them that the love that he has for them is exceptional. And that he's passing on this love that comes from the father to them. And he says, now remain in my love. Stay in my love. He could have said, you know, you see me do a lot of uh, miracles, stay in my miracles, walk in my power, you know, stay in my um, knowledge, because as I said, never man smoke, spoke like this man. But the attribute that he wanted them to stay in was love, not the rest of it. Now remain in my love, abide in Jesus's love which is the same love that the father had to the son. And how do you do this? He said, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. So he's spelling it out. How do you remain in his love? You keep his commands and S on it. 
not to pick out the ones you like and you ignore the ones you don't like. Keep, and this is just as I have kept my father's commandments. And Jesus was never disobedient. The father said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased because he kept his father's commands. He said, this is discipleship. Remain in my love. You know, a lot of times people tell you to do things and they don't tell you how to get it done. And you have to go scrambling, especially if on a job to figure out how to do it because they're setting you up to fail and they're hoping to get rid of you. But the love, the everlasting love of Jesus says, I need you to remain in my love. And this is how you're gonna do it. You're gonna keep my commandments. You're gonna behave like I have. I have been an obedient and dutiful son. And then he went on to tell them what will happen. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Why is it important to keep his command? He said, so that the joy I have. Jesus went to the cross joyfully. He obeyed. He says, no man take my life from me. I laid down. He said, I could call 10,000 angels right now and clean up Herod and Pilate and just destroy them if I wanted to. But I lay my life down. I'm doing it with joy because I'm obeying what is necessary to bring you into fellowship with God. You know, this myth of, oh, my life is so hard and I'm praying to God and he, you know, I'm so suffering. Christianity is not no miserable existence. If you are obeying God's commandments, he says, my joy, Jesus's joy will be in you and that your joy may be complete. And the Greek word that they're using for complete is what you use when you have a vessel and you fill it with water or some liquid. You know when you put water in something and you fill it to the top, there's nothing else could hold in it. If you put anything else, the water will overflow. And that is what he's saying, that my joy will be complete on the inside. He's going to drive out anything that's not of him. The self-doubt, the lack of self-love, anything that's hurting, any pain. He said, my joy might fill you. The things of the past, they're going to leave you. They're not going to haunt you. Because if you keep my commandments, my joy will be complete in you. You won't have to worry about the naysayers and the people who remember what God has taken away from you. Your joy will be complete. And as we have said, the joy is not based on circumstances. It's not, ba it's not based on what's happening in your life. It's what puts us apart from the people who are not of God. Because our joy is based on God, on the fact that as he said, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. And enduring everlasting love. This is the kind of joy that after they had finished beating Paul and Silas and put them in prison, they started to sing hymns and give praise to God. This joy doesn't have any rationale. It doesn't say, oh God, what you're doing? Um, you must make a mistake. Why is this happening to me? It's the joy that says, if I'm here, if God wants me here and he's able to keep me and deliver me. It's the joy of the Lord that we praise him no matter what's going on because he's worthy of the praise. He's all, all powerful, all loving. You know, he says, if, you're, if you as a man know how to look after your children and to show them do good things, what about me? You know, we can look into the Bible. We could see that Joseph could have said, I did the right thing. I ran from Potiphar's wife and here am I in prison for doing the right thing. But instead of saying that, he kept his act together and he kept living for God so that the the keep of the prison could put him in charge. 
And he saw reward beyond anything that he could have seen. Like he could not have gotten to be prince of Egypt or Pharaoh's um, right hand in Potiphar's household. He had to go into prison to come out, to be elevated. So it doesn't matter what's happening. The joy of the Lord tells us that this situation is for our, our upliftment. It's, this situation is for God to show off for us. Whatever the situation is, we give him the praise. We give him the glory because our joy is complete. And, you know, Jesus is like a teacher giving you the syllabus. How does your joy get complete? You keep my commandments. How, you, how do you remain in my love? You keep my commandments. And once you do that, your joy will be complete. But everything revolves around keeping his commandments. How do you get an A on my science test? Not by talking about how much you like to watch a movie. It's not going to happen. So what we want from God, for his joy to be complete, we have to follow the syllabus, keep his commandments, remain in his love. That's what God is asking of us. And verses 12 to 15 says, <clears throat> excuse me, my command is this, Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servant because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my father. I have made known to you. So here's Jesus still talking. You know, John recorded everything and it took three chapters, 14 to 17 of this farewell discourse. And we have earlier, he said, love, love thy neighbor as thyself. But he's taking it higher here. He says, love one another as I have loved you, with the love of God. Not looking at competition, not being in confusion, not trying to prove you brighter than anybody. He says, as I have loved you. And how did Jesus love us? He humbled himself, put off glory, and came down to walk this earth. They said that if you were to map how much Jesus walked, he went around the world like three times around the, uh, the, what they call it, the middle part of the world, around three times. And the only time we see him not walking is one Sunday, the Sunday before he crucified, when he got a cult and he rolled into Jerusalem. The rest of the time, he lived ordinary. Who announced his, 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 his coming? The wise men came from the east because they knew somebody great was being born. But it was shepherds that the angels sang to. They didn't go down to Herod's palace. They sang to shepherds who were in the fields abiding. Something about minding sheep seems like make God show up for you. <laughs> you know, so the, he came in a manger, not in a palace. How love each other as I have loved you. Not to show off on somebody. Not to say I am the one God speaks to. I'm the other shepherd. This is my pulpit. As I have loved you. In humility. In love. In understanding and accepting that we are not who we could be. But we are on our way to being what God could be. Would have us to be. You know, that's how he loved us because none of us are worthy of God's love. Not he's all of our righteousness is filthy rags, you know. And the story is told. The church father, Jerome, he wrote this down that the apostle John in his old age, he couldn't walk to church. They would bring him to the service. And every time he came, he would say the same thing. Little children love one another. 
And there was certain, why you keep on saying the same thing? This is boring. And he said, because this covers everything. My master Jesus says, if you do this, you cover everything. John the beloved, who was in Jesus' bosom, kept saying to the day he died, little children, love one another. It's love that is asked of us, and not human love, but that we love one another as God would have would loved us and gave his life. He said, greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. And he said, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. Greater love, he came to die. He came not just to die, but to take the sin of the world. When he became sin, God the Father couldn't look at him because God cannot stand sin. Be, he is holy, altogether holy. But in order to reconcile man unto him, Jesus had to take our sin and become the Lamb of God. Slaughtered, his blood was shed for us. And he has called us friends only if we do whatever he commands. It's not, I am a friend of God to do whatever I want, show up in church on Sunday, said the sinner's prayer some years ago, and now I'm free to live as I want because I'm on my way to heaven. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You're on your way to hell. You got to do what Jesus commands. And you can't pick out the ones you like and the ones that you think are easy. Or uh, some people do just make up a new standard because I think they believe they could out talk God. They're brighter than him and he don't know what the world is like in 2021. So those things are outdated. We're in a new era, so I'm making up a new set of standards. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't read the Bible for themselves, so they got taken in. The same John said, many false prophets will arise. The apostle John said that, you know, is active obedience. Not I'm here sitting down in my, lying on my bed. I'm not getting in any trouble. So that makes me a friend of God. Active obedience. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. You know, Jesus didn't say, Form a clubhouse, stay away from the world because you don't want to get dirty. And all of you just compliment yourself, or oh, we're all safe here, we're on our way to heaven. He said, bring others to Christ. And he didn't say, form a clubhouse, elevate yourself and your family as superior to everybody and tell them how important you are to God so they should be bowing down and worshiping you. Jesus didn't shed his blood for that. It is not of God. He said, you are my friend if you obey my commandments. No one can take that away. Anyone who wants to be a friend of God can be a friend of God. We don't need to go to anybody. And God does not do gossip and he doesn't care what the popular people say. His word is true. He's not going to give in to anybody. I'm a living witness that God is going to use you if you put yourself in the way to be used of God. I am a friend of God as long as I obey his commandments. And he said, I no longer, you no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I call you friends. We are not on no lower level, you know, just bring the pot and put it over here. We don't know why. He's saying, I need it over there because I need to use it or whatever. He gives us the reasoning because we're on friendship level. You confide in friends. You tell them your business. You know, you look for comfort when you're down from them, you know, and notice we are, he has made us his friends. 
Jesus is not your friend for you to tell him what to do, like he's some ATM, our oh Lord, I need $200, and you're not living any life. He has made us friends, but on the basis of obeying his commandments. And he said, I have called you friends for all things I heard from my father I have made known to you. He hasn't kept any secrets. He hasn't said, this is too privileged for you. Uh, I'm going to tell this person, not you. He's talking to his disciples. They've walked with him. They have been running for their lives with him. As the high priests have tried to kill him. They have remained faithful. They've seen the multitudes. They've seen the miracles. They've seen the casting out of demons. And they have walked with him. And he said, I haven't kept anything from you. I trust you. Everything that my father says to you, I'm giving it to you so that you can obey my commandments. And you know, we are on a special level because in the Old Testament, there are only two people who are referred to as friends of God, Abraham and Moses. Moses, God came down to talk with Moses face to face in the tabernacle as a friend. And Abraham, he would visit with him. He would say, can I hide this thing from my friend Abraham, what I plan to do? And he said, no, Abraham is my friend. Of course I have to tell him. As New Testament people, there's not that, that we have admission to the greatest relationship that the world has ever seen and could ever con consider. I am a friend of God as long as I obey his commandments. He calls me friend. You know, Jesus calls me friend. And his friendship is from everlasting to everlasting. And his friendship is not based on whether I have money or not. A lot of people are your friend when you could look out for them and give them cash and do things for them. The, the friendship of Jesus is real. It brings joy. It says, my peace I leave with you. He said, I'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on me. This is what it's about to be a friend of God. They're not your friend when certain people are around and other people, they have to pretend they don't know you because you're not good enough for them to be friends with you when this crew is around. I am a friend of God. It's something that we can all boldly say once we keep his commandments. Something that no one can take away from you. No one can gossip in God's ear and take away that privilege. Can he not listen in? He said, man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. I am a friend of God. Doesn't matter what anybody may say or think. I am a friend of God. We all are friends of God once we keep his commandments. 15, 16 to 17 say, you did not choose me, but I chose and appointed you so that, so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the father will give you. This is my command, love each other. You know, in the Jews in that time, and if you watch Chinese movies like I do, you will see it. The um, disciple shows up and says, master, teach me. I want you to be my master. You pick out who you want to be a master. But Jesus is telling the disciples, like he's saying, it didn't happen by accident. I chose you. I picked you up. And as John said, whosoever will, I'm calling you. I'm reaching out to you. And he's called us, like I said, not to form a clubhouse and compliment each other, but you might go and bear fruit, bring others to know who Jesus is. 
in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of what is happening. There's so much fear. There's so much grief. There's so much loss. We ought to be bearing fruit. This is the time that people need Jesus more than ever before. This is what God has called us to do. Not to form exclusive clubhouse. My church is better than yours. I got better singers. My worship has a lot of flash. But that you might bear fruit and that that fruit will last. And the only way it's going to last is they get to know Jesus. If we teach them his commandments, they cannot remain in his love unless they know what Jesus commands. And he says, whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Not that you run out there and say, oh, I got an ATM machine named Jesus, so give me a Mercedes Benz and a $5 million house. That's not what it's about. But as we go to seek God, as we go to bring people to him, whatever we need, once we ask, whatever we want for the fulfillment of the command, he will give it to us. If God is in the vision, it will prosper. If God is in the work, it's going to prosper. Because once you ask, he say you have not because you ask not. You have to ask. Every day when he taught his, children, his disciples to pray, he told, he told them, give us this day our daily bread. Every day you wake up, pray for bread to live by. It's a constant seeking God's face so that we may not get arrogant and get, and get, and get carried away. And he ends this section. This is my command. Love one another. Seems to be the hardest thing sometimes to show love and to walk in Jesus' love. It is not Jesus' love to put down other people and lift up yourself. Jesus never did that. When he told them to go into all the world, he said, go into Judea and into Samaria. No self-respecting Jew would go down into Samaria. They despise them. They look down on them to today. And this is where in second place he told them to go. Go where you don't want to go. Go where people are going to look down on you because you've gone there. He didn't tell them to go to Herod's palace. He said Samaria, Judea. Go where people are in need. The standard that he says, you know, when we show up and he says, well done. And he's going to say, well done. He said, I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was in prison and you came to see me. And he said, as long as you do this to the least, not the one who has the most money and could do something for you. As long as you do this to the least of my brethren, you do it unto me. This is the command. I am a friend of God. I, Novella, Dovey from Law Works, Molyneux, I am a friend of God. We all are friends of God. If we keep his commandment, and this is the desperation that God has today. Will anybody listen? Is anybody paying attention? Keep my commands. Love one another as I have loved you. He couldn't say as you love yourself because some of us don't love ourselves. We've been so put down, so called down. We think we are nothing, but love one another as I have loved you. Walk in love, that your joy may be full. There's something in it for us, that your joy may be full, that you might know me, and that others that pray, like Pastor we need to say this morning, that our hearts may break for the people who are dying and not knowing who Jesus is. That we will stop wasting our time, our efforts, 
And instead, we will concentrate on being who God would have us to be so that we can bring others to him. Bernalyn. Amen. We thank God for using our sister so compassionately to tell us about one more time about the love of God, which is so grand, so wide. Praise the Lord. As you know, there's another scripture to say, abide in love. You know, the, the scripture that the sister reads said, keep my commandments. And you know, some people feel as if they have to walk in the straight jacket. But when you abide in the love of God, you are free. You are free to express yourself. You are free to fly. You are free to talk. You are free to tell others. And most of all, you become a friend of God. And my question to you today, are you? keeping the love of God? Are you keeping the commandments of God as he said you ought to? Jesus said, just like my father has loved me, even so have I loved you. That love was complete. It's a perfect love. And so many love in the world today is not perfect. It started out good and then it's broken. But from the beginning, God's love is perfect. Even back in the Garden of Eden, when Adam changed, changed his mind and turned towards the devil, God could have said, okay, I'm going to start over. But because you know what his love is all about, he tell him, okay, we're going to move on, but there's, there's going to be an intercessor for your sin. And even to do that intercessor is still telling us that because his father loved human beings, mankind, those whom he created by showing his love, by sending him to the cross to die for sins so that we can become children of God and abide in his love. For those of you who are abiding, whatever your situation is, the love of God is made perfect in you. But you have to consider what that love is all about. And for those of you who do not know how great the love of God is, Today is a day for you to experience that love. Today is a day that you can say, I surrender all to him. All to him, I surrender. But just open up your heart and ask him to come in and fill you with his love. Amen. At this time, we continue with our worship from Sister Denlin. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, um, Pastor Springett, for such powerful words, loaded words, hallelujah. Um, I am a friend of God, hallelujah. If you ever need a friend that sticks closer than any brother, I recommend Jesus jesus because he's that kind of friend he will never never forsake you even though he knows everything there is to know about you I recommend Jesus, Jesus, because he's that kind of friend. He'll walk right in front of you to always protect you. So the devil can do you no harm if within your heart you take him in new life it will begin because he's that kind of friend oh if you ever need need a friend 
that sticks closer, closer than any brother. Oh, I recommend Jesus, J S U S Jesus, cause he's that kind of friend. Oh, he'll walk right in front of you to always protect you. So the devil can do you no harm. If within your heart you take him in new life, it will begin for he's that kind of friend. Oh, He'll walk right in front of you to always, always protect you. So the devil can do you no harm if within your heart you take him in. New life, it will begin. Because he's that kind of friend. Oh, Jesus, Jesus is that kind of friend. Oh, oh, Jesus is that kind of friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. That is what we're here about, to recommend Jesus to you. Same Jesus who said, take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And he start with abiding in his love. Amen. So we thank God for our sister singing that song. Now this time we're going to go into a word of prayer. God of love, God of grace, God of sufficiency. We come to you one more time. We thank you for the preaching of your word. We thank you for the anointing under which your word was preached. We pray, Father, that as the word go out, Father, that, Lord, it would reach the hearts. Those who need you most, Father, those who are broken, those who are looking around, God, and has not yet looked up. As they hear this word, Father, may they look up and declare, I they surrender their lives to you. We ask, oh God, that your Holy Spirit, oh God, presence would draw them to you, that you would soothe their brokenness, Father, that you would wash over them with your love, God, and bring them to a place of healing. We thank you for that, God. We pray for those, oh God, who are on the way, oh God, but their love they has left off their first love, Father. Pray, oh God, that today, oh God, will be a day that they would return to you and recognize, oh God, that all that they need to do and needed to do is to abide in you consistently, Father. For you said you will never leave us nor forsake us, God. So that's the kind of God you are. That's the kind of Father you are. That's the kind of brother you are. That's the kind of comforter you are, Father. So we pray, oh God, that Lord, oh God, those of us, oh God, who are on the way, Father, Lord, we continue, oh God, to abide in your love, to obey what your word said, Father. For you say your word is not grievous. Your commandments are not grievous, Father. You have not told us something that we are not capable of doing, oh God, because you have shown us the way. That's why you are here on earth, Father, that you can show us through your manifestation of living life on earth, what the Father's love is all about. So we pray, God, that Lord, as we take another look, Father, God, that Lord, we would measure up ourselves, oh God, to what you have called us to, oh God. And Lord, oh God, we continue to walk in the way, to draw others to you and to draw closer to you. We pray, God, that you would bless all of us, oh God, around this forum, oh God. We ask, oh God, that you continue to prosper us in your word, God, in your way, God, in the ministry, oh God, to which you have called us to. We ask that, Lord, you draw, bring those, oh God, who 
who wants to hear you, God, who need to hear you, Father. Bring them to this website, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we praise you and we magnify you. We say we love you, adore you, and worship you. Bless us again, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. God. Continue to share this ministry with others that others may know Christ. Amen. At this time, we have the benediction and the notices from our leader. On Friday, February 19th, we're going to have a Black History Month celebration. Dr. Cornelius, Minister Black, Pastor Juanita is going to be 7 p.m. Tennessee time, 8 p.m. Eastern time, and 9 p.m. Uh, think it's time. Okay. And if you want to contact us, our email is here as well as our number. If you want to make any contribution to the ministry, please check out our website. We are a 501c3 entity. All of your contributions are tax deductible. If you want to look at the videos after the service, you can also visit our website or go to our YouTube channel and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. <clears throat> please. Uh, these are books that I have written coming out of my doctorate and I'm inviting you to, like I said, not make money. But if you really want to know what you believe, the only way that you can fight against the false prophets and not get caught up in nonsense is if you know what you believe. And I must say to you that I've been in the church most of my life and I was embarrassed when I realized how much I really didn't know about my faith. And the Bible says that you must be ready to give a defense of what you believe. So this is not about money making for me, like it's a 99 cents, but so that you too might be able to give a defense of the faith when you're questioned. Um, and I want to especially thank the people who um, worship with me faithfully every Sunday, Pastor Juanita, Bernalyn, we go back so far, I appreciate it so much. Minister Denlin Black, who, uh, her gift, her voice, her anointing is incredible. And I also want to thank Makeda and Aisha for showing up and always being here. Um, I really appreciate it. And I want to thank everyone who listens in. I pray that you'll be blessed. I pray that the world will break chains, bring healing. He's still in the healing business and healing, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally in, and financially, because the people are hurting all over the world and God is still able. No one can change that. Please have a blessed week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 <laughs>